Good morning. What a beautiful day, yes? How grateful I am to be here with all of you this morning. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Maureen Serency, and I'm the practitioner for our service this morning for meditation. And as always, I invite you to look around the room at everyone, knowing that this is a special time that we spend together in holy communion with spirit. And what a precious time it is. I'm grateful to be with all of you. I'm grateful for this center. I'm grateful for each and every person for our Reiki practitioners, knowing that we all receive the energy, even if we're not in the chair with the little napkin. I'm grateful for our sound, David, and everyone that makes this possible for us to be together. So I invite you to relax especially today as we move into the busyness of Thanksgiving and all that that entails. And I'd like to start out with just a quote from Henry David Thoreau. I am grateful for what I am and have. My Thanksgiving is perpetual. So I invite you now, as we enter into the silence and the I am presence, knowing that, indeed, our thanksgiving is perpetual.
God is, I am. My thanksgiving is perpetual. I am so grateful for this time we've had together in spirit. Feeling that we are one in and of the one. How thankful I am for this truth. For the only truth. The truth we know and we carry forth now into our service this day and in the week. It's a new day, a beautiful day. Let us go now and rejoice in it. And together we say, and so it is.
everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to laugh. And a time to weep To everything turn, turn, turn There is a season turn, turn, turn And a time to every purpose under heaven time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace, a time that you may embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to build up and a time to break down, a time to dance and a time to mourn time to cast away stones and a time to gather all our stones together to everything turn 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 there is a season turn 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 and a time to every purpose unto heaven time to gain, a time to lose, a time to rent, a time to sow, a time of love, a time of hate, a time for peace, I swear it's not too late, and do everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time for every purpose unto heaven. Do everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time to every purpose unto heaven That kind of love just makes me happy That kind of love just gets me through The kind of love I only get from you 
when I feel it deep inside me, I know there's nothing I can do, and that's the kind of love I get from you. to what's ever troubling me in times of anger it's like my heart is locked and closed but you hold the key that kind of love just gets me happy the kind of love just gets me through the kind of love I only get from you <laughs> and when I feel it deep inside me I know there's nothing I can do And that's the kind of love I get from you I thought I was abandoned And then somehow lost my way Empty heart and handed And you filled me with your love And I gotta say That kind of love just gets me happy The kind of love just gets me through kind of love I only get from you <laughs> when I feel it deep inside me I know there's nothing I can't do and that's the kind of love I get from you sun that starts my every day and when the day is done you've been with me here all the way and that kind of love just makes me happy the kind of love just gets me through the kind of love I only get from you <laughs> when I feel it deep inside me I know there's nothing I can't do And that's the kind of love I get from you The only kind of love I get from you And that's the kind of love I get from you Ah, good morning all. Jasmine blooms in the air of that old Spanish square, lined with palms at the edge of the sea. As the darkness draws nigh, a black carriage rolls by, and the night's drenched in mystery back in days of old shadows swung in the branches now there's only moss in the old live oak tree not a cloud in the sky I look up to a spy Ancient city moon shining down on me.
And a mockingbird calls from that old fortress wall and joins a guitar in a bar across the street. And he comforts me there like an old easy chair. And the sound makes my whole night complete. Well, if I had a choice, I would stay here forever. But you never know what is going to be. Well, I just hope that I might carry on neath the light of the ancient city moon shining down on me. That old ancient city moon shining down on me. Yeah, and that's where we find ourselves. Good morning, all. It's good to see you again, as always, coming into these holiday weeks. It's a rigorous time of year. flows on in endless song a mother's lamentation I hear the real though far off hymn that hails a new creation through all the tumult and the strife I hear its music ringing it sounds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? Well, though the tempest loudly roars, I hear the truth it delivers. But though the darkness round me close, songs in the night it gives. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging, since the love is Lord of heaven and earth. How can I keep from singing? When tyrants tremble in their fear And hear their death knell ringing When friends rejoice both far and near how can I keep from singing in prison cell and dungeon vile? Our thoughts to them are winging when friends by shame are undefiled. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm While to that rock I'm clinging Since love is Lord of heaven and earth How can I keep from singing? How can I keep from singing? All right. Yeah. 
I believe it's that time. And please give a, a normally warm welcome to our dear friend, Dr. Ken. Thank you, Don. Wow, thanks for being here this morning. If you're joining us online, we're glad you are. But let me tell you, your online experiences, even with your in your pajamas with your cup of coffee and your donut, doesn't match the energy and the feel of being here this morning. This is a great place to be. Now, I know you always come on Sunday morning, and I would remind you that uh, all we're doing here, everything that we're doing is, in life is recognizing ourselves as the love and joy and compassion of spirit. And to make that happen, all we have to do is to leave all our troubles, our fears, our kudos, our woulds, the turkey recipes, the pumpkin pies, leave that stuff outside, and for the next 45 minutes or so, to open up an avenue of spirit possibilities. And what are spirit possibilities? Well, they're for more love, more joy, more happiness, more compassion, more kindness, more pumpkin pie. Let's go calorie-free pumpkin pie. How about that? Nothing is impossible with spirit. And so you're here today opening up that channel of God's love and compassion, and wonderful and great things will happen because you're here. And let me tell you, this is going to be a great service. Well, I've got so many announcements this morning. I had to pull out a paper. So... <laughs> First thing is we've got our, our Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving Day we're coming here and uh, we're going to have turkeys. At first I thought that we would have to buy the turkeys frozen and ask people here to cook them for us, uh, but a dear friend of ours who's not able to come anymore, she called me up and she says, Ken, don't worry about that, I'm going to buy the uh, turkeys already cooked and already carved so you can bring them uh, there on Thursday. So. Thank you. Thank you, Linda Lewis, for that. Now, we do need side dishes and things. We're going to gather here at 2 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day. We'll have the turkeys. Bring your favorite side dish. Uh, we'll have a, a, the Thanksgiving dinner. Then we're going to relax. We're going to play games. We're going to maybe have a movie playing in the background. It will be a wonderful, fun day. So make sure you're here for that. 2 o'clock. Um, also, our dear friend, Diana Ambrose. Diana, stand up in the back so everybody can see what you're, how wonderful you are. Uh, she's going through a challenge right now, and one of the things that she's asked is if we could help uh, cook some food for her and have it prepackaged so that, you know, that she doesn't have to thaw out a whole casserole. We've started collecting them in the back. If you'd like to bring that next Sunday, uh, we've got a... a uh, igloo back there that you can put it in and they'll be able to store it and, and pull it out. It can really make a big, huge difference. Uh, December is coming up. We don't have anybody signed up for hospitality. If you'd like to do that, um, please do that. We also have adopted five families from the Betty Griffith house that we are um, providing Christmas for. You know, cr Christmas, the holiday seasons, is a very stressful time. Uh, the people at Betty Griffin tell me their, their shelters fill up during the holiday season. And can you imagine being a mom, not being able to provide Christmas for your kid? And so we're adopting these families. We're providing Christmas for them. If you would like to do that, please see Linda Phelps. Linda, stand up. And she'll sign you up for one of the kids or one of the families. Thank you, Linda. Uh, also, you can see, Linda, for our commitment dinner that's coming up December 2nd, we like people to prepare baskets uh, that we can auction off or raffle off. If you have an idea for a basket, you can see Linda Phelps, and uh, that will help us uh, defray the cost for the commitment dinner. Um, I haven't organized this, but I would really like to, is uh, Christmas Day. Uh, I'm going to be out of town, or not. I'm not going to be here on Christmas Day, uh, we're going to have a wonderful Silver Fawn is going to do a candle lighting service. There's wonderful Silver Fawns. <laughs> and it's going to be an, uh, a different candle lighting service. We've got harp music we're going to play. 
and also it will be a Native American interpretation of the candle lighting service. I would love, if you want to do something special for me, you know, I know some people have talked about buying a year supply of Publix fried chicken. <laughs> Others have talked about a year of Weight Watchers. <laughs> I got you on my list. Uh, if you want to do something nice for me, come on Christmas Day, organize this thing, and there's a nursing home we could go visit and go give out uh, Christmas presents, gifts to people in nursing homes. We used to do that before COVID. And if you, if you think, you know, if you want to have a meaningful Christmas, you do that because you will be surprised the number of people that are there in the nursing homes on Christmas Day with nowhere to go and a little bag of, with a book of puzzles, some candy will mean all the difference in the world and it will make for a wonderful Christmas. So I need somebody to organize that because I can't be here. And if you would like to step up and do that, then see me after service, and I would, I'll, I'll put a word into Santa for you if you do that. So, you know, I got a line into him. Uh, Lunch and Learn has got us, uh, is, have their meetings on Wednesdays at 1230. They got a new book by Gary Zukoff. It's Spiritual Partnerships. So if you'd like to start that, that's on Wednesdays at 1230. We've left our Diwali uh, lamp up. Uh, if you'd like to make some marks on the Diwali lamp, that's wonderful. And we also want to thank Patty Thurston, where's Patty here, for providing the wonderful food for... It was really wonderful. So, now, you know, part of my talk is, is that I get to share with you... Uh, one of the things I'm going to talk about is how in the holiday season, if you, if you give yourself over to spirit and generosity, spirit will amaze you with what it will supply for you. And this morning, it has done just that for me. You know, we're getting the Venus Manley Scholarship Committee organized again. We need volunteers because Tangela won't be able to do it for us this year. And uh, so one of the things that we've done is we've reached out to past recipients. And this morning, we have a young man that probably won our first year uh, giving out the scholarships. And I remember him well um, because he, he was a, an amazing young guy. I remember his dad very well. And he's here visiting with us this morning. I'd like for you to meet young Jack Kennedy. Come on up, Jack. Share, them, share with them a little bit about what you've been doing and what you're up to. So. I have been very thankful to be a scholarship recipient. It's helped me uh, in my education immensely. For the last five years I've been in school, I got my undergrad degree at Pepperdine University out in California. Pepperdine. They don't take dummies out at Pepperdine. And uh, for the last year, I've been at uh, University of Florida getting my master's. What are you getting your master's in? Uh, data science. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. What else is coming up in your life? Uh, I got engaged in July, so getting married in June. Big move to Texas soon. Excellent. Uh, and so that's uh, the, the big one I'm looking forward to. Sure. <laughs> so you remember about coming here to, to get the scholarship? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's one of the kindest and most welcoming places I've ever been. I mean, y'all really are. And just seeing you up here on the stage speak, talking about how you're doing everything you can to help people people not just a part of the group here, but people outside. It's, it's very inspiring, and you're, you helped me when I asked for it, and you just continue to do that. So I, it just really makes me happy to see this work from you today. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. I'm glad you're here. So, so Jack, I, I tell them each time that we have people come up that when I was in college a long, long time ago, that I had an aunt who uh, would come up at family gatherings and she would slip me like a $5 bill or something. And I just remind them, he, you know, he's here. He's getting ready to go out to Texas. You know how those Texas women are. So he's going to need some money. So if you want to kind of get up to Jack and slip him a 20, no fives, no fives. And I know we're close to Christmas time, but I don't want to hear any jingling and a jangling. We, you know, 
you know, so slip him a 20 or something because he's going to need some money for that Texas girl, and we want to send him out there proud because we are so proud of him. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> well, I think I've talked enough now, so why don't we have some music? Don, come on up and play something for us. Congratulations on your engagement. What do you know about Texas women? <laughs> as little as possible. <laughs> decorum, we must we must think of decorum. <laughs> Many times I, I, I keep returning to, to certain songs here that I do because they just fit. So I'll try to bring in new things now and then, but this one works for me here. When I was first invited to fill in for Catherine Archer, I had no idea what I was walking into. I'm very glad I walked in. And this uh, was maybe the first song I did here. And I remember Ken said, well, I don't think I've heard a song that fits our belief system more. And I thought, well, I'm in the right spot. There's a sacred tune dwells inside of me I heard it in the mountains I heard it by the sea it calls us all together the many and the one it's been around forever and never goes unsung it's the sum of all that's true and all we've got to do is raise our voice and sing It echoes in the canyon, it whispers in the trees, it fills my heart with gladness, it resonates in me. It's the sound of angels passing, the zephyrs high above. An answer to my asking for just a little bit of love to help me make it through. And all I've got to do is raise my voice and sing. Hallelujah, are Ram, Wai Guru, Satnam, Kiriye, Koke, Namaste, Amen. This sacred tune, so clarion, so clear, resounds across the ages for everyone to hear. Oh, it doesn't need a venue, and it doesn't need a band. Just open up and then you may come to understand that it's ancient, yet it's new. And all we've got to do is raise our voice and sing. There's a sacred tune that dwells inside of me. Mm. Mm. 
Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. That's perfect. So now to get our service going, we're going to have a Marine Surgency coming up to do a reading and treatment for us. Come on up, dear Marine. beautiful day and all these beautiful people. I am so grateful to be with all of you this morning. And as Ken was saying, this week coming up and the holidays and everything, we have so much to be thankful for. And I just want to share what, if you weren't here for meditation, one of the quotes that uh, Reverend Sally Robbins picked, and it's actually from the Science of Mind magazine, for Thanksgiving Day. So if you have a chance to read it, I was going to use that, but I was drawn to something else. But I do want to share this quote with you that we can think about and carry us through. I am grateful for what I am and have. My Thanksgiving is perpetual. Henry David Thoreau. And I am so grateful to be here with all of you. I'm grateful for this center and everything that it does. And we have all of this shown. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing us and sharing what you're doing. And I would also like to thank everyone that's here participating in this service. And we all are. And I'm grateful to David and Miles for our sound. I'm grateful to Don and his music. Thank you for that beautiful song. I remember it when you sang it that first day you came here. <laughs> and I'm grateful for all of you so much. Is it a beautiful day or what today? Mm -hmm. It is, it is. So the reading that I am doing is actually from um, the Intenders of the Highest Good newsletter for November. And Tony Burroughs kind of started this, I don't know how many years it's been, like 20 some or whatever. Anyhow, and this is an excerpt from their book, The Code. And the code is the intentions that they have. There were originally 10, I think there's 11 now. So and this is what he said to us. While living in New Mexico, I found that I liked going out into the desert. And it was there on a mesa near Chaco Canyon where I made an intention to access higher knowledge. I went into a mild trance and suddenly Cocapelli. The, yes, those of you are familiar. And I looked, I had an ornament for that. And it was like, you know, the metal art that I had actually gotten out in New Mexico. And I'm, I couldn't find it because I was going to bring it. And <laughs> I think it was, um, it went to the Betty Griffin, you know, resale place um, when my daughter insisted I do a Swedish death clean. <laughs> and <laughs> so I couldn't find the ornament and I was going to draw one, but that didn't happen. Anyway, those of you who are not familiar, Google it later. I love the, I just love the guy because he's just happy. Anyhow, so back to the story. Um, and suddenly, Cocapelli, the most outrageous being I ever met, appeared. After playing his flute and dancing around for a while, he told me that one of humanity's most fascinating traits had to do with our strange but stubborn urge to hang on to beliefs and activities that don't serve us anymore. <laughs> he placed our current collective reality in that category and made light of it, saying that these characteristics were soon to be obsolete, yes, 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 and seen by the masses as the old ways, not to be confused with the ways of our ancient ancestors when they were in their glory. He pointed out that the abbreviation for old ways is O-W, ow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he got up, jumped around like he'd just stubbed his toe. He went on to say that the new evolved ways, as presented in the code, were abbreviated N-E-W, new. And that would lead us out of our current despair into a golden age. It's happening. 
<sighs> Take your pick, he said, as he hopped around on one leg. Al or new? And each time he shouted, Al, he exaggerated his pain even more. I'll never forget how hard we laughed and laughed later on when I was confronted by a difficult situation that stemmed from me holding on too tightly to my old ways. It somehow made it easier to deal with it if I recalled his antics that day out on the Mesa. So let us know that those new ways are happening and that we're part of it. That's why we're here now on this planet. And it is our responsibility and our joy and privilege to participate in accelerating the ascension of our humanity, which is our divinity. So I invite you to turn within and relax and allow, allow the peace of the creator to fill your heart. That we have so much to be grateful for and allow it to be. I let it be, I welcome it, it is mine. I am grateful that we are one, in the one and of the one. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you, Maureen. That was lovely. Well, I thought I would talk this morning. Um, uh, my talk title is Surviving the Holidays. <laughs> my teacher, Kennedy Schultz, he would give this talk each year, and I thought it was, a, it's a, it was a good talk to give. The holidays are coming up, and you can fairly feel the panic in the streets as people are getting ready with them. And so I think it's important to come up with a strategy because the holidays are for us to enjoy, even though they are stressful. You know, statistics are that more bad things happen during the holidays. Uh, Betty Griffith will say, tell us that their shelters were filled up, their emergency rooms will fill up, uh, cops will have to go out to houses more. And so we we need to prepare ourselves. We need a strategy. I think one of the challenges is is too high of expectations and I think the media does this and I think it's kind of built in because when we were children we had Santa Claus come visit us and even though we know that's not going to happen he lost my address a long time ago uh, it's kind of we kind of still want that sense of wonder and so it's unrealistic like I said, the news media um, or the entertainment media plays big into that. Uh, there is a commercial that you can see this time of year where this beautiful woman is waking up in this really lovely bed, and she notices there's a red ribbon attached to her hand. And she follows the red ribbon down the staircase. It's a beautiful house located on one of the coastlines. She walks outside, and there is this her hunky husband standing next to a new Lexus with a big bow on top of it. Where do they get the bows? I've never seen those big bows, you know? And, you know, you have that kind of expectation, and so it's sort of a little disappointing when you get a new set of cheese knives from your, your sister. Then there's a Coca-Cola commercial. You see it at the movies, and it's a teenager, and he's He's at his parents' house. They've got this party going on. He's meeting everybody, you know, at the party and, uh, you know, the neighbors, his stepmother, and even his high school math teacher. Who invites their math teacher to a Christmas party? It just doesn't happen. So we want to be realistic and realize that there's no such thing as a perfect holiday. Nothing is, nothing is perfect. I had to face that reality a long time ago. We had just moved into our house, the house I really loved in Atlanta. I wanted to have a big Thanksgiving. I wanted my friends from the church to come over and my sister and her husband to come up from South Georgia, and, and they showed up. And just as we got all the food on the table, we sat down and were eating. Uh, 
her, uh, my niece and her new baby came in, their grand, grandbaby, and they wolfed their meal down within two and a half minutes and was on the floor playing, uh, playing with the baby. And it just ruined my whole, my expectations of having this elegant meal and this high conversation. You know, that was out the window. Later on, I looked down. We had a long hallway. I looked down the hallway, and I saw my sister's double D bra coming up the hallway. It was my little Bijan Max, and I could see his tail behind the, the bra wagging furiously. And I was, oh, shoot me now. You know, just get this over with. Now, I love the holidays. I love them. I love I love Christmas music. Oh Holy Night is one of my is my favorite songs. I love Christmas movies and shows. Auntie Maine is is a favorite. Uh, the Pinky and the Brain Christmas show is is a, is a good one. I love Christmas food, eggnogs. Well, you can tell that eggnogs, and I've never passed up a red velvet cake. Uh, so. If anything for the holidays, what I have to watch out for is that I'll get a little bit down after the holidays, after all the, the tinsel and everything has come down. So I know this about myself, so I have to have a strategy of how to avoid that, of how to get myself over that. You know, remember the cartoon with Bugs Bunny when he had to fight the bull? And at a certain point where the bull was knocking him out of the stadium, he says, I've got to get a strategy. And that's, that's what we need, a strategy. And so for myself, what I do is in January, about the third week of January, I organize a short trip for myself. So, you know, a little bit of new scenery always helps. And then, Jack, uh, the Venus Manly Scholarship starts up in, in February. And that is always lifts me up. To see these young kids come in and talk to us about their plans, it's always, always inspiring and encouraging. So know for yourself what the challenges you are, and then, and then get a strategy of how you can deal with them. And if you're just at a point of your life, you know, maybe you've had a significant loss in your life, or maybe you just don't like the holidays. They are, there are people who just don't like them. It's okay. It's okay. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to meet anybody's expectations but your own. Don't try to be the Grinch. Don't go around and ruin everybody else's holidays. But give yourself permission to get through them without as, with the least emotional wear and tear. And if that's getting a bucket of fried chicken and staying home and watching all the Star Wars movies or some series that you like to binge, then, then do that. I had a Jewish friend in Atlanta, and she told me that on Christmas Day, she would clean the, her house from top to bottom. Well, that's okay, but you don't have to make it painful for yourself. You don't have to go in the new year smelling like Lysol. You know, I had another Jewish friend, and he said they would go out uh, for a Chinese restaurant and go to the movies. Well, that seems a bit more pleasant. You know, do something that works for you. And make sure in all your giving, you do something nice for yourself. You do something nice for yourself. You know, like I said, Santa's lost my address. So I want to make sure that I do something uh, nice for me. Maybe it's a massage. Maybe it's going to get something that invokes some really good memories. <laughs> you will be appalled at this notion. For me, it's a bag of cheese crystals. That, that invokes wonderful memories for me. When I was in D.C., I would come back to Macon, Georgia, and in my mom's house, the, uh, all my sisters would be there. My nieces would be there. They ranged. There were uh, six of them, all from uh, 14 years old down to three the house would be packed with people. It was packed with food. You never knew who was coming in and out. And uh, if I came in late and my nieces, because they would stay up and watch old movies, uh, they would try to talk me into either ordering a pizza or going to get a bag of cheese crystals. So those brings up really wonderful, happy memories for me. 
Now, here's also a, a pitfall that you might have, and that is getting too nostalgic and looking back too, too fondly. It's okay to look back, but you don't want to think that the best of your life happened sometime back there. The best is yet to be. And for a long time, I did do that. I looked back on my years in, in Macon because it all kind of ended very quickly. My mom passed away. My best friend passed away. And very suddenly, within like three years, every contact I had with Macon was gone. And I got too nostalgic. And for a couple of years, I pined for those Christmases in Macon. And I realized that I was doing something that what I was doing is I was taking a really great memory from one year and I was matching it to a great memory from another year and I was linking them all together and I was calling that Christmas in Macon. But that really wasn't the truth because when I pulled them out, what I realized, well, there was one year I was broke and had almost no money to get anything for anybody. There was another year I came down with a bad flu and there was another year I was on the outs with one of my friends. And so it wasn't just as simple. It wasn't the truth of the matter. It was a little bit more complicated than just the perfection that I had in my mind. So we want to be realistic about, about the past. Remember, remember and appreciate and enjoy the past, but know there's something for you now. Here now. There's something for you to do here now that's important, that's valuable. The best of times are now. And, of course, it is a spiritual holiday. So we want to, we want to bring that, that spiritual uh, uh, message into our lives. And what is the core of the spiritual message? The core of the message is that in the darkest possible times, that a better idea can show up to the most unlikely of sources. You know, we, we, we don't really realize it now, but like the Holy Family, uh, the, uh, Mary and Joseph, they were outcast. That, that gets written over in Scripture. You know, the story is, is that they had to go back to Bethlehem to pay a, a, a poll tax. Historically, we know that that really did not happen. The Romans didn't, didn't have such a tax. But anyway, they had to go back to Bethlehem. It says there was no room in the inn. Well... There were no rooms in first century Bethlehem. There was no Motel 6 or a Holiday Inn. You went and you stayed with your people. That's what you did. And if we, the logic of the story is if he went to his family, Joseph went to his family, somebody there in the family, some nosy older person, started counting up the months and realized that she had been pregnant before they were married, and they had to find room in the stable because his people had put them out. They weren't going to have them in their, their righteous household. They weren't going to have them there. So this Christmas holiday, if you come up on a family at a convenience store, you know, young, young couple, too many tattoos with a baby and a, and a car you wouldn't drive across the highway, that's the holy family. That's the holy family. And be sure to send them thoughts of, of, of kindness and compassion. And if you can help, help. Get into a partnership with spirit. Spirit is closer to you than your next breath. It walks with you on this journey. And we've got to call it into action. Because when we do, it will awe you. It will awe you with how much you're loved, how much you're valued, how much you're in support, supported. And if you will let go of your determination that things have to work out the way you think they should and just let them flow in an easy and natural way, things will unfold miraculously, miraculously. I really think that in some ways my thinking about science of mind is changing because, you know, when I first came to this teaching, we really focused on the power of affirmative prayer to create good for ourselves, and that's wonderful. We want to use that. We want to do that, but we also want to know that we're agents of good 
We are angels of good right where we are. And so why don't we use that power for affirmative prayer to help bring peace to the world? Why don't we use it to help bring more joy and more love and compassion? Why don't we help it to bring up, raise up kids more like Jack who are going to move out into the world and do great good? We have the power to do this. And you know, dear ones, uh, my teacher, Kennedy Schultz, he said, the more you get, and he meant by that in, in get in, in relationship with spirit, the less you'll want. Because ultimately, you'll get to a place where what you want is just that knowing you're one with God and that you're here to do great good and you have that capacity to do great good. Spirit called you by name from stardust. And it is, it is wanting to awe you with how much you're loved. It has never been disappointed in you for one moment. It's always been more inspired by your possibilities than any mistake you've ever made. You know, last Thursday we had our interfaith Thanksgiving service. And it was an amazing, amazing event. Silver Fawn and Joy were there, and they did the uh, indigenous people blessing for as people came in, it was, it was really wonderful. Uh, and here's the thing about that. Uh, I'm still the organizer of the interfaith uh, community, and it almost didn't happen. It, it was almost 15 minutes away from not happening because I had reached out to the ministers, and they were happy to participate, but they didn't do, want to do any work in planning it. And they didn't, everybody is too busy right now. And so I almost decided just to give it up and say, well, it's just this thing that's it's passed. But I thought, well, let me give it a shot. <laughs> so basically what I did is I, I, I just organized the whole thing myself. And I just, m me and Joy, basically, we just went through and we just listed what people were going to do. They did it. And, <laughs> and they didn't complain about it. That was the most amazing thing. In fact, they were so happy about it. We had two young ministers there. One was the, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Will from uh, First United Methodist Church. He's a young guy. And he said, I've never participated in an interfaith event. And he says, this is wonderful. We had Reverend Britton. He's from Mount Moriah. And he said, I've never participated. He said, this is my first year, but it won't be my last. It won't be my last. So we pulled people together, and it all fell in place in ways that I, I, I could not even imagine. It was more miraculous than I thought it could be. Uh, one of the things I was concerned about was that we would have a participation from the Jewish community. And I had their rabbi at Temple Bet Yam. He lives in Miami and flies up to do their services twice a month. Well, he's very, he, it's hard for him to get things organized here. And then right when we were in the thick of organizing this, the troubles in the Middle East started up. And so all their concern was for uh, trying to help out. In fact, the rabbi is in Israel right today trying to help out. So it looked like we would not be able to have anybody from the temple. And when I did the prayer service over at Temple Bat Yam, I happened to mention it to a, a lady that I would really like for them to blow the shofar. That's the ram's horn. If we could do nothing else to do that. And she said, I've got twin teenage boys. They'll be happy to show up and blow the shofar for you. And they, one of them did. One got sick, but one did. And he was so miraculous, this teenage guy getting up in front of all those people, blowing the shofar. And it was amazing. Friday morning, I got up, and I, I was a piece of burnt toast. I mean, I was exhausted. So, you know, after three hours of watching too much TV news and drinking too much coffee, I pulled myself to that computer because I thought, I am going to send an email out to his mom, the president of the Temple Bet Yam, and Rabbi Kogan. And I'm going to let them know how this 16-year-old Jewish boy got up in front of a congregation of 99% Christian people and blew that show far to let them know we are here. We are here, and we deserve respect. 
We deserve compassion and kindness. So I got that out, and the rabbi wrote, wrote me back, and he said that he was so pleased and happy that I had let him know that. Every day we should ask ourselves, how can I pass along the blessings of goodness? How can I let the love of God shine through my broken places? Amy Camp Lear from Memorial Presbyterian, she got up and she reminded how all of us are vulnerable, how easily broken we are. Vessels of clay, she said. But like this clay, we can manifest the Spirit of God through our brokenness. It's from our brokenness that the Spirit and love and compassion of Spirit can shine through. Uh, Reverend Britton, he got up and he said, I'm coming back to this. This is too important. And the last thing he told the congregation, be encouraged. Yeah, the night is long. The storm has blown hard. But now's not the time to turn back. We've got to stand up and do our part and turn the rest over to spirit. And it will, it will amaze us in ways that it can bless us. Last week, I was talking to my friend in Atlanta. He's a minister in Atlanta. And he's got this congregation that is very wealthy. They like to put on lots of parties and they decorate. And when, when they do their gatherings, he talked about how they only have linen tablecloths. I have never told him about the plastic tablecloths we use around here. So, so he has a different kind of milieu up there. And he was talking about how that uh, he was uh, New Year's Eve this year is on a Sunday. So they're planning a big New Year's Eve celebration for their Sunday service. And after I got off the phone talking with him, I was like, oh, my I haven't even thought about New Year's. I don't have anything planned. You know what? You know, it's going to be such a, you know, I don't, it's like, I, I, you know, I didn't, I haven't done my part. I haven't stepped up. So last week I got a call from a woman who I don't think I have met before, but she called me up and she's got a new baby and she wants the baby to come in and be christened on New Year's Eve. So that Sunday, we're going to christen a baby up here on New Year's Eve. How much better is that? I would much rather christen a baby than have somebody blow a noise horn at me. Spirit can bless us in the exact way we're looking for and in ways that will amaze us. So I started thinking about well, how we can incorporate this in our service. And, I, and Spirit gift, gifted me with a wonderful idea a wonderful, a miraculous idea, and that is I bought a book, and in that book, I want all of you who are coming, or even if you don't come that day, to write affirmations for that baby in that book, and then we're going to give the book to the mom. Imagine that book if, if it will stay on. Imagine him being a grown man and facing the challenges of life, reading those affirmations, and imagine him passing that, that book on to his sons and daughters, how important that book can be. You know, I got so enthused about this idea. I was telling a cynical friend of mine the idea. First of all, don't share a great idea with a cynical friend. It's never a good idea. As I say in Scripture, cast, don't cast your pearls before swine. <laughs> And he told me, he says, Ken, he says, you're, you're, what are you thinking? He says, that book will get thrown out long before he gets to be an adult. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But then what matters is we did our part. We stepped out in faith. And it doesn't matter if it gets misplaced on a college move or whatever. Those intentions will be powerful for him. Uh, more importantly, they will be powerful for us. Because our intentions was to bring more spirits light into the world. To be like the angels that sang out on that desolate and cold night to terrify shepherds. Be of good cheer. We bring you good news. A child is born. A better idea is here. And it's for you to know, to witness, to be. To raise a lamp of love of God's hope and inspirement and encouragement into the world. And we can do it. God is counting on you. It called you by name and has never been disappointed in you for a moment. And now's the time. This is the truth in your life this morning. It's the truth in mine. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you.
always inspiring. Thank you for your patience. This is a house song here. Bring the light. Bring the light. Let it shine. On me, bring the light, bring the light, let it shine on me. When it's too dark, gone on too long, things look too stark, things feel too wrong. Turn it over, let it go, bro. Take a knee and bring the light, bring the light, let it shine on me. Ah, oh, bring the light, bring the light, let it shine on me. No circumstances. May befall you, but there'll be chances, great and small, to write your story. It's not over. Wait and see, and bring the light. Bring the light. Let it shine. Let it shine on me. Oh, bring the light. Let it shine on me. When it's too dark. Thank you, John. So now is our opportunity to let that light shine on us and support that light. And we do that in several ways, in volunteership and prayer, praying for us to see the center grow and thrive, and, of course, in uh, COIN. So however you choose to support the center, know that your support will return to you multiplied abundantly. And if you will, take your intention and place it over your heart and read with me this affirmation of prosperity. I live in a universe of abundance as I freely and joyfully give. I join in the divine flow, and all I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. If the ushers have stepped down, Don, what you got for us? Uh, I'm going to try this Mary Chapin Carpenter song now. Picked up on it. I did it years ago I did it. So I'm gonna try to do my best for it. Unfortunately the tune is too much like the one I just wrote. If I can do that, a 
totally erased it from my mind. I'll get esoteric on you. They say that chance favors the prepared mind. I've prepared mine in a number of rather suspect ways, I suppose. I'll give you that. Still, I've been walking the beaches of the world and stalking deep-cut city streets and searching in a thousand lost taverns just hoping to find something of a little import. And that's a fact. Never saw it as some windmilling quest, but I admit there's a number of passionate obsessions and obsessives in my life. I'll give you that. It was always more of a path, patterned and worn, leading to a deep well of meaning and reflection in my life. And that's a fact. More like the word writ in the sand, scripted by some mysterious hand. Time will erase every last trace of Olivia. But I know for sure she's out there still, same as she was and always will be. I spend my time hoping to find Olivia. those silvery threads to the stars, that cosmic web of epic geometry filled with nothing but possibilities is real. I'll give you that. And it's not where we travel, it's that we do, because where we're going is where we've been, yet here we are, floating through the ethers like bits of stardust. And that's a fact. We're more like the word writ in the sand, scripted by some mysterious hand. Waves will erase every last trace of Olivia. Yet I know for sure she's out there still, same as she was and always will be. I live my life. Hoping to find Olivia More like the words Script in the sand Written by some mysterious hand Time will erase Every last trace of Olivia I know for sure she's out there still same as she was and always will be. I live my life hoping to find Olivia. Yeah, I'll do my time trying to find Olivia. Thank you, Don. That's lovely. Thank you for Diane. And thank you for your contributions. Your support is allowing this center to grow and to thrive, to continue to be the beacon of hope and love and light that it is. So we thank you. We bless it. We release it. Knowing it does this good and powerful work, returning to us multiplied abundantly. Together we say, and so it is.
All right, well, let's close our service with a, an affirmative prayer. Before I do, just want to remind you, we've got lots of great food out there in the hospitality. Thank you, Pat Conover. Uh, sign up for the Betty Griffith uh, uh, home for getting uh, Christmas gifts for families in need. And show a little love and appreciation to Jack. Make sure he knows how, how much we appreciate and value him. All right, so I'm going to do this closing prayer in the first person. Take it in for yourself. If I say something that works for you, hold tight to that. If I say something that doesn't work for you, just let it slide by. But just know this truth with me today. There is but one God and one mind and one power, and that power is perfect love. That power is divine wisdom. That power called me by name from stardust so I could walk the soil of the earth manifesting God's love right before my eyes. So here today in this sacred place, surrounded by all these wonderful, loving souls, I choose to see myself as God sees me, not as weak and wounded, but bold, dynamic, moving out into the world, creating a path to bring more love and compassion into the world. I choose to see myself as making a difference. I am here to raise up the vibration of all of creation, and Spirit is calling me on. So this morning, I leave behind every shackle of, fa of lack and limitation, of self-doubt. I leave all that stuff behind. I've played with it long enough. This morning, I lift my eyes to a greater knowing for myself that I have been called to be that wonderful agent of change, a singing angel of hope and love and joy and prosperity. I am here to raise up and lift up, to rejoice, to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And the path has been made clear before me, and I am on the move, and I am not holding back. This is my truth. Every cell of my being radiates this right knowing, and I release this prayer into the mind of God to do its good and perfect, bold and dynamic work, returning to me multiplied abundantly. And together we say, and so it is. All right, my friends, I'm going to leave you with one last idea, and that is your life, your life. It's not a problem to be solved. It's a miracle unfolding. Your job this week is to go name your miracle, proclaim your miracle, and make it your own. God bless us all. Now let us go be the miracle spirit is calling us to be. Until we see each other again, Reverend Ken with the amazing Don wishing you many blessings. Think of your fellow man, lend him a helping hand, put a little love in your heart. You see it's getting late, please don't hesitate, put a little love in your heart, and the world will be a better place, yeah, the world will be a better place for you and me. Just wait and see how oh, put a little love in your heart. You've got to. We've got to. Oh, yeah, well. Another day goes by and still the children cry. Put a little love in your heart. If you want the world to know, ye won't let hatred show. Put a little love in its heart, and the world will be a better place. Yeah, the world will be a better place for you and me. You just wait. Just take a good look around. If you're looking down, put a little love in your heart. I hope you will decide that kindness will be your guide. Put a little love in your heart, and you know that the world is gonna be a better place. Yeah, the world will be a better place for you and me. 
We just wait and wait and see, and we're gonna put a little love in our heart. You've got to put a little, oh, you, you gotta put a little love. Mm, oh, we're gonna put a little love in our heart. Thank you. Thank you. 